Hello everyone, my name is Rotoro, but you can just call me Mr. Unemployable. We are at the three-quarter mark of the 2022-2023 season in League One. We are in sixth, still hanging on to a playoff spot. This is amazing. And our featured match today is against 16th place Bradford City, who have recently hired a new manager after firing their predecessor because they're in 16th place. It should be an interesting match, as you know, uh, this squad has a depressing history of playing down to the level of its opposition, so hopefully we can uh, pull our socks up and get on with it here and get a good win to keep us in the playoff hunt with Crew Alexander and Swinningtown nipping at our heels. Cannot afford to drop points even to draws. Though, looking at our uh, past matches, uh, since that nil-all draw against Oldham, 3-1 against Preston, 1-all draws against Carlisle, Shrewsbury, and Carlisle again, which are, those are dropped points right there. Those At least one of those should have been a win. Not happy with a three draws against three lower teams. Win against Sheffield Wednesday, which is great. Win against Doncaster Rovers, which has always given us trouble. Draw against Notts County, and then losses to more common Walsall, which were just depressing performances all around. And then a 2-0 win against Cardiff City. Cardiff, of course, are just a shell of their former selves and have been plummeting down the football league since, oh, I want to say since three years ago in this game. They've just been an absolute shell of themselves and are in real danger of going down to League 2. Hopefully for fans of the of uh, of Cardiff, uh, that does not happen. But we have other things to worry about, not the least of which is that contracts are coming up. And as we approach the end of the season and contract renewals begin to happen, it begins to figure out, okay, how can we rejuggle everybody's salary to fit under cap? As you saw, I've sacrificed 200000 of my transfer budget to get us below payroll. We're still losing money hand over fist for now. Under 800, or just about 800,000 lost in the season for about half a million in the red. Hoping, hoping, hoping that uh, solidarity payments boost us back up into the black at the end of the season. So to help that, I've been re, uh, reconfiguring salaries and, and uh, getting new contracts signed. The nice thing is that James McEwen took a nice pay cut. He's down to 2,500 for another year. Other people have received raises. McGoldrick's one of them. Uh, Hickford is another. We are seeing people saying you'll get uh, more or less what they deserve, although I only just now realizing, I think Pollard is one of them, that you can give them a, a end of season contract to delay the, si the start until the uh, the start of the next season, which I don't know why I haven't been doing this for so long. I mean, you'd think that would be the, the go thing. Yes, he provisionally agreed to sign a new contract on May 7th. Why haven't I been doing that? That makes... Makes way too much sense. Why haven't I been doing that? Ugh. Anyway, now that we've learned that lesson to start giving out contracts, uh, it's time to figure out who can we grab once their contract ends. Because again, a lot of what we see here, I'm not renewing Jonathan Quinn at 4600. I'm not renewing Tom Eaves at 4200. They, well, Eaves has been okay. 7.8 has been very good. Five goals, three assists. That is a lot of front-loaded activity. 13, 13 games, 11 starts, two subs. A lot of front-loaded activity. When he's been playing recently, it hasn't been exactly his best work. And Quinn as well. Uh, 21 appearances, 7 goals, no assists, 6.77 average. It's time for both of them to uh, to bid the club adieu. They have been excellent servants. Would have liked to get a little bit of cash for them, but as it is, it's just going to be off you go. I'm going to reclaim that uh, 8,800 in salary. Uh, I'll also be reclaiming Simon Francis' salary since he is retiring. His 3,800 a week will be recompensed. He will be retiring at the end of the season. Thank goodness he has not been good. <laughs> he has just not been good. Oh, his uh, recent form 6.56, season average of 6.64. Yeah, it's time for him to go. He's not been helping this club at all. And the reason I'll be glad to reclaim all that salary is that Tolga Ceylon's contract is up with Arsenal. And I will be doing everything in my power to get him to join us. He has been a fantastic get for this club. He's currently got 8 goals and 5 assists in 24 appearances. 7.09 average. He's just fantastic. Blows Cameron Brannigan out of the water. His 6.92 average isn't horrible. And his 7 assists aren't horrible. But I'm paying 4100 a week for him. And his actual ability is not quite there. And he isn't up to taking a pay cut. And he's not up to being transferred either. So... Need to uh, find a way to get rid of Brannigan and bring in somebody else. I have been going through scouting now, as we go over here to the shortlist. I've been trying to find people who are approaching the end of their contract who might be good pickups. Nathan Broadhead, I thought would be for sure a slam dunk amateur contract. Yes, please, to replace Brannigan. 
Problem is, Broadhead wants more than Brannigan. He wants a serious payday to leave TNS and join us. So that's a bit of a roadblock there. Uh, Colin Bell is still in the contract. We're not going to be able to poach him away on a free anytime soon. Lewis Hardcastle might be an interesting pickup to replace Lewis Hornby. Uh, Hornby's been average at best, and I wasn't looking for someone average at best when I signed Hornby. So Hardcastle might be an interesting get. We'll let the scouts do their work and see what we find up there. Also, some options on the right. Paul Westwood, Andy Keeling, uh, Craig Ingram. The idea here being that I want to replace uh, Joseph Jones. Three star is good, but he wants much more than the 1.9 he's making now to renew his contract, and I'm not paying him much more than the 1.9 he's making now to renew that contract. Uh, of course, Matt Parker, he will be gone. Uh, he was a bit quite of a bust for us, uh, so that's unfortunate. Let's see if we can find a buyer for him. But that's what we're looking at. We're already looking to next season, looking at who we're going to cut, who we're going to bring in. We'll see if we can save a few dollars here and there and really reinforce the squad because, I mean, best case scenario, we are in a promotion fight. Worst case scenario, we actually go up. <laughs> I, I, I do not want to see this club go up again. It is not in our best interest to go up to championship. Well, that would be just a phenomenal feather in the cap, and assuredly, I would be getting job offers from other clubs for that. Ah, uh, this club would not survive. It would be a straight relegation right back down to League One. So let's not go through that agony. Let's just try and consolidate in League One before we make another push for uh, promotion. On the international front, oh, we have some great news. Oh, before I get to that, transfer history. Almost skipped over transfer history. Uh, transfer history for us, one big note to note here, uh, Loic Vigoro, uh, 16,000 up to Celta de Vigo. He just, he wasn't getting his work permit here, and I wasn't going to strand him here without getting playing time, so he's off to play for Celta de Vigo over in Liga BBA. Uh, he's right, right now playing with their U20s, I believe. Uh, check the squad here. Uh, Loic Vigoro, he is, yes, he is currently playing, I, my apologies, the U19s. Oh, no, he's always with the B. I see he's gone to their B side. Oh, that's fine. He's their starting keeper for the B side. Good for him. He will get minutes. He will get playing time. And I, I'm hoping he does because he's with the Canadian national team. Uh, and now that he's no longer U20, he's with the senior side. Which brings me to what I wanted to talk about earlier. Canada. Our new new gens are in. Yay, the new new gens have arrived. Woohoo. Uh, we don't exactly have the saviors of the national team here. Uh, on goal, uh, we've brought in uh, Marco Esposito and Ante Vukovic, as well as Brian Whiteman. Uh, again, not exactly the saviors of the program in this generation. So thank goodness we still have Carducci, Bello, Irwin, and Dickinson. And I suppose Vigoro, though he is uh, fading fast. At least we have them to keep the program going. Uh, on the right, uh, didn't really get anybody of any good use here. A couple of kids from the residencies and academies that may may progress into something we'll have to see uh, right now uh, Jamie Sirio uh, from the Fire Academy is still our best bet for the next generation though we'll have to see if he actually gets to a full star in the not too distant future uh, other kids there weren't a whole lot I mean there wasn't like a an absolute standout this kid will save the program signing or uh, or new gen so uh, not too worried about that uh, Frank Haber is still an interesting prospect out of the Toronto Lynx, but he's really not going to crack the first team anytime soon. He's a B-team player at best. Uh, Sam Adekubi's had a real renaissance in his career. He's really starting to look like a good depth signing at left back. He's not going to beat out Chris Hemming anytime soon or any of the other center left backs like uh, Schmitz or Schmitz or Schibeling. So that's that. On the D-mid side, I really had hopes that we'd get a good D-mid. Uh, Tyler Beatrice has still got a lot of potential, and I'm very, very hopeful that he does try to be something. But the newest new gens, I mean, Michael Brooks, that's a lot of potential, but that's a lot of silver stars for you, Michael Brooks. Oh, boy. Not too excited about that. Uh, going down the rest, there wasn't a whole lot to speak of, I don't believe. Uh, yeah, Fort Lauderdale brought out Jerome Richard, not really interesting. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, wait, Tyler Melvin is still with us. Not really... Holding on high hopes, but you never know. I've been surprised before. Fraser Gray from the Westchester Flames. This is an interesting pickup, actually. They just new gen him. He could turn out to be something half-decent. Again, not too hopeful. Could be. Uh, was there anything else? Uh, Lars Stewart from the DCU Academy. Well, if his silver matches his gold, I'll be very happy. But uh, right now, not too excited about that low ability. 
I was hoping some of our strikers might be the saviors of the program. I might get somebody worth picking up here. But as you can see, not a heck of a lot. Oscar Soto and Kyle Godfrey, just absolute bunk here. Uh, Jovo Zivkovic, though, from Timbers Academy, 15-year-old, has oodles of potential. This might be a kid that we keep our eye on, and I hope, 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 hope he develops and gets time with the U-20s. Because he could be quite good, though he's going to need a lot of minutes. Hey, his potential. So we'll cross our fingers on Jovo there. We'll cross our fingers that we can get somebody. Somebody, somebody. And he's advanced forward, which is good. We need one of those. No target forwards. We need actual scorers here. And I say we need that because the U-20s are going to the U-20 World Cup. Woohoo! That's right. Canada's U-20s are going to the U-20 World Cup. Let's take a look at their match history here. Uh, oops, not there. It's going to be over here in the U-20s. Oh, yes. Look at that. They were perfect through the group stage. One all out. Five wins, zero losses, 15 points to automatically qualify for the World Cup. Uh, going to the playoff here. Uh, the U.S. defeats Panama and Jamaica on penalties defeats Costa Rica. So they will be joining us at the World Cup. And in the final, Mexico absolutely thrashed Canada 5-1. So unsurprisingly there, Mexico, Canada. Oops, let's go back there. Mexico, Canada. The U.S. and Jamaica are your representatives for CONCACAF in the U-20 World Cup. That's pretty good. That's a pretty solid uh, qualification venue there. And Mexico are the hosts as well. I wonder, does that mean one of Panama or Costa Rica will join because Mexico are hosting? That will be interesting. Point is, uh, I'm quite happy with this. Canada going to the 20 World Cup is a great achievement, and I hope they do well. All right, let's get to today's featured match here. It is my 200th match in charge of Grimsby Town. As you recall, I recently celebrated my 400th match professionally as a manager, so uh, we are... Closing into a point where I will have spent more than half my managerial career at Grimsby, which I did not expect at all. So, let's see if I can make this 200 match with Grimsby a special occasion against Bradford again. They're in 16th. We should be able to get a point, if not all three. Let's see if we can pull it off. Go with the 4-4-2 here. I reserve the right, though, to push DeMaio down to join Brimmer in a 4 2 2 DeMaio is an interesting case here. I He's on a 7.75 a week, which is amazing. And he wants a substantial raise. He's not worth it. But he has a clause where if he plays 25 league games, uh, he gets an automatic one-year extension. So I will be playing him in every single match to see out the season. I think I might be a game or two short. I think his injuries may have uh, may have derailed our chances of getting him a 25-game season. But if they haven't... And I can get him 25 games. I would not say no to another year at 775 for Connor DeMaio. Would not say no to that at all. All right. Good. They understand that I need to be impressed. I want to see goals for us. I want to see solid defensive work here. We're still seeing too many whiffed headers there by either McGoldrick or Hickford. Let's see if we can cut that out here. Grimsby in there, blue Bradford. In there, it appears to be a red and orange. Well, that might just be my monitor. Solid start here from Grimsby. Lots of possession. Well, that is a false metric in the modern game. Can they turn into something substantial? Scott, little flicked header, controls it. Has the ball taken on his feet by Preston, who goes long. Robson is there. Brimmer, Hornby, Brannigan, Scott. Oh, just over there from Scott. You really should hit the target from there. A little bit disappointed that he didn't. However, as he's running our chances early, that's a good sign. Can we keep the pressure up? Robson crosses that right back in. Diakite? Diketti? Interesting name. Robson. Brimmer. This is good. I'm liking this possession here. Pelkington to Scott. Oh, the bar denies him! Well, at least he sort of hit the target. I mean, it counts as off-target. But that was a lot better than whipping. Sente beaten to the ball by Robson. Puts it inside. DeMaio loses out, but Brimmer will take over. Hornby. Pilkington's a good ball. Pilkington can't beat Loach. Oh, Pilkington. And that's another clear-cut chance. Pilkington and Scott have their shooting boots on. He's got to hit that target a little more often. Oh, long balls are 
passing rate isn't the best. And indeed it is plummeting now. Oh, well, it seems to stabilize at 75%. That's good. Good looking away game for us here. All right. This match still is ours for the taking. Robson has been horrible. A long throw taker is just having an off game here. Come on. Good. Improve, everyone. I want you all to improve. Well, they sort of bought it. All right, where's what's his face here? Uh, oh, Diacote. Great name. Oh, Bradford made a halftime substitution. All right. Pilkington. Brought down. Free kick. Pilkington's taking quite a few nice free kicks here in the, uh, in the interim between episodes. Scored on a couple, which is nice. And this is a good-looking counter for Bradford. Clancy, great defense there. Fantastic last-ditch last tackle. I think that would have been Brimmer who would have been held back on the set piece. Well done indeed. And Jones has space here. Does he go with it? He will. Looking up, there's the ball to Scott. Scott's got numbers forward. Goes back to Jones. There's the ball to the top. Brimmer is the man forward. Mile will take over. Grant looks long. Scott to Pilkington. But he was offside. All right. Neil Law is not the worst result in the world. I would take it. Oh, my goodness. Come on, boy. Set piece defense. Tighten up. But that's two clear cut chances early that went begging. Got to convert. Especially if we want to stay in this playoff hunt. Concern here. De Young. Oh, come on. First of all, that was outside the area. Secondly, it was never a penalty. I want to see this. I want to see this. Where did this actually take place? All right, so there's De Young. And the foul is... Yeah, look at that! The foul is outside the box! Come on, ref! Clearly outside the box. Never a penalty. Never. Alright. Take a look here. Come on, McEwen. Come on, McEwen. Ah, oh, he tried. Unfortunately, it was not to be. <laughs> oh, I apologize. I apologize for that one. All right. Well, now we have to go for it. <sighs> okay. Uh, look. Not happy. Pilkington can come back for Hornby, which is turned out to be a good sub more often than not. We'll bring on Pollard. So if Sc And we'll switch him with Scott. Magni injured. Good. I mean, oh, it's horrible. Yeah, they're really taking the game to us here. Uh, Vicente, huh? Uh, yeah, this guy. Go easy on him. He's a flopper. Uh, yeah, Robson's not having the best game of his career, is he? Block there. The roof will keep it in. Blocked again. Never that nonsense. Welp, here's the thing. We need to get a chance, and we need it now, and I'm not seeing it. Let's push Scott back for Branigan and bring Quinn on. We gotta do it. We need offense. Oh my goodness, the near post volley. Forget the flick on. Well, again, what did I say about us playing down to the level of our opposition? And it turns out we've gotten even further down to the level of worse. Alright, this is just getting a little bit... Unfortunately, the missed header. 
Can we capitalize on it? Of course not. Let's see if we can't do something better about it. Quinn. Well, Quinn hit the target. You can't fault Quinn for that. He at least knows how to hit the target. All right, with our final sub, we're going to go for it. We're going to really go for it here. Uh, should be on split. Thank you. All right, here's the crazy move we're going to make. Scott moves up. Brimmer to there. We're going to go 4 3 3. We'll bring on Ryan Carroll. We'll see how this goes. Uh, not automatic. Actually, let's swap you with Pilkington. You can play there. You can play a supporting central midfielder, please. Actually, we'll also get you playing. Now, let's do that the other way around. Let's go deep lying. Oh, he's probably better with support. All right. And you also, central midfielder support. Good. Go! Go get him, boys. Man. It's not often you expect Robson to have a complete stinker. 5.0 from Thomas Robson. Abysmal. Not often you see that from Robson. He usually is pretty solid. Our long throw specialist. Not at all happy with the way he played there. Oh, good. Break some ankles while we're at it. 14 to 4. Bradford just turned it on. Yikes. Well, so much for that. Our 200th match goes as well as our 400th as professional did with a disappointing loss. At least the one against Sheffield Wednesday was a ding-dong affair on both sides. This was just horrible. And Robson, final rating of 5.5, not good at all. Yeah, I am far from pleased from that. Not good. Although we do manage to stay in six. This crew also lost 2-0 to Wycombe, but Knott's moved up with a win over Sheffield. Three-way fight. We've got it on goal differential. But we could have really used a win to get past Oldham, who also lost to our rival Scunthorpe, who we play next. Scunthorpe in the middle of the pack as well. Hopefully we can find our form against them. Yeah, I'm surprised at this result too. Not good, boys. Not good at all. Next time on Mr. Unemployable, the finale of the season. Our first season in League One so far, on the whole, it's been a pretty darn good one. Let's see if we can keep ourselves... In the miracle spot of being in a playoff spot by the end of the season, I don't know if it'll happen. But I am very happy that we will have avoided relegation. Thank you very much, boys, for showing up. Now, that'll be next time on Mr. Unemployable. My name is Arturo. Thank you for watching, everybody. If you like what you've seen, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, favorite, share, follow, tell all your friends about these videos on YouTube, and don't forget to join us in Twitch chat, twitch.tv slash Rotura, where you can watch all these episodes as they're recorded live. Since Master has summed up that episode nicely with yeesh. I agree. Yeesh. Once again, my name is Rotura. Just call me Mr. Unemployable. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.